Okay, so welcome to the workshop on this. Sorry, this has been the fastest turnaround, I think, in between. Now, um, we've got 35 minutes for this, and what I was going to do is basically walk through a really interactive process for you to work on your collaboration. But before I jump into that, I'm interested in um, any questions that people had that came up from the presentation today, and I'll see if I can weave in those answers as we go. Is there anything burning? Yep. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> the essentials. Yep. Sure. Yes, I will be covering those in here. Sorry, it was, it was a bit rushed. Anything else that pops up for people? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to be talking a bit to that today. But how do you, if you're working in a collaboration, what do you need to do on the ground to drive that? Yeah. That's a good point. How does it link um, at the high level? Yeah. Any others that I can weave in? Perhaps um, just driving collaboration in a context where agency, uh, uh, the thrust of agency programs and, and, and funding is well away from mm. anything that is non-client specific. You know, so for the NDIS, for example, or uh, uh, sort of the health department, mental health programs, where it's got to be, if it's not about a client, then it can't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very common problem. Um, so how you work against kind of funding outcomes or funding requirements. And I'm putting working against deliberately because that's kind of what it is. So, so you were yes, talking yes. to another one. Because I know you were saying that you work people's strengths and some of the NGOs have the greatest strengths. But I was hearing a lot of larger organisations that are raised there. I'm a bit concerned about the fact that small NGOs are doing that higher discussion around research trust, not that they don't, but <coughs> how can we ensure that NGOs are captured in, in that, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. And, and they are, and citizens as well, was also talking about, so. Okay, yep, one more. There was a question that came up on the electronic thing mm. about how, um, about competition. So mm. Yes. Do you have any good ideas about how to overcome the competition? My favourite subject, <laughs> competition, yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I'll have a crack at um, weaving all of these in, in some way. So because we've got a short time, um, if things are coming up as we go, please just yell out and I'll try and kind of bring that lens in. So just to kick off, I want you to think about um, the collaboration you're in, well, or just collaboration in general. Make a list of all the things that you can do to have the worst collaboration possible. And then think about, have you seen it before? But just top of mind, what's the things that you can do if you were designing... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going too fast here. If you were designing the worst collaboration possible. <coughs> have a chat, or have a chat to the person next to you, or just make a list of all the things that you've either seen, been involved in, that have led to a pretty bad collaboration. Just take a couple of minutes. They will have it on the slides as well. When you have an agency that wants to have their logo, my feedback about the logo, oh, I have a good day. And then if they can't have their logo, which <laughs> 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 
is a sometimes that can be what is going to be the okay okay so, so let's um let's hear what you've come up with i'm sure everybody's got some ideas the table at the back just shout out top of the mic common agenda so Different organisations having their own agenda as to why yep. they to work. Okay, everyone had coming with their own agendas. People experienced that before? Yeah. Yep. yeah? Or okay. hidden agendas as well. And hidden yeah. agendas, yeah. yes. Yeah. Lots. Of, there's always hidden agendas. Yeah. yeah. Okay, others? We've had, we've had some experience, a lot of it just recently, with power tripping, micromanaging, mm. um, which has included bullying and intimidation. Um, from the legal, you know, legal organisation. Um, also, not sharing information and skills, so it's essentially mm -hmm. non-collaborative at all. Okay. So, other people relate to that. Yeah. 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 Stuff around power, bullying, mm -hmm. intimidation, not sharing. Yeah. Anything else that hasn't been said yet? That paternalistic, like that. There's somebody, the legal organisation, that becomes like a parent. Mm. <coughs> so, someone controlling, directing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We also had um, lack of communication was brought up at our table, mm -hmm. and as well as that um, unequal sharing of tasks, if you like, or act, action, taking action. So mm. sometimes, like a committee, can be like one or two people doing a, a lot of the work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this idea of commitment not being shared. Yeah. This is something that just came up. Just a question that I'm asking myself. The legality of who's responsible when you are through operating. Because mm. uh, I'm doing uh, rock and water, and one of the groups that I'm working with, obviously, they're trained to do it. But they're not the lead program who's organised and brought everybody together. Mm. So they're concerned, and so there's, there's a weight of the legality issue of. Mm. Um, so governance is, guess, what I'm hearing yeah. there. Who's, who's got accountability, responsibility, yeah. all of that? Yeah. yeah. A poor strategic partnership. Can you say more about that? So, um, so like, I guess in a way, poor poor planning or strategy on how to deliver and process the way that everything will work. And <coughs> I, I mean, I guess it encompasses a lot of things, but mainly about the strategy and delivering and working together in a collaborative environment. Mm. Yep. So, I mean, often you might see, A, there's not a strategy, but if there is, there might be people having different strategies or that it's not enacted. Yeah. Final one? Uh, resistance to new ideas. Mm. Just, yeah, well, I've done it before and it didn't work. Yep. That, which we do a lot. Yep. <laughs> okay. So lots of nodding. <laughs> yeah. um, so who's seen all of these before? Yeah, show of hands? Pretty much everybody. Okay, so the, I guess the key thing I want to make with this, everything you've all just talked about is around culture. It's got nothing to do with the processes necessarily or the structures. It's the way that we work. And there's a really good reason why people show up in collaborations but do what they do <coughs> back in their own service. You know, because we, unless you design and bring them in differently, people will come in with the same mindset, culture, way of working to protect their own service back home. And that is really normal. So I think all the dynamics you've all spoken about, what I'm going to walk through is a process where you are planning deliberately to <coughs> deal with those, because they're really normal. And, you know, as human beings, this is what we do. So they're probably not going to go away, but what we can do is work with, mitigate, plan for, and design for, and build a culture that will address that. So usually when we come together in collaboration, we might have an agreement, an MOU, we'll have all these things on paper, but we, we don't pay too much attention to our culture. So I'm going to be focusing quite a bit on that in this. So again, just starting off with, we often skip past why are we doing the collaboration? <coughs> so it can be okay because that's what the funders asked for, but fundamentally unless we know our why, it's very easy to get sidetracked, taken over by other agendas, or just try and enforce our own agenda and not realize that we're working against our purpose. So I want you to spend a couple of minutes and maybe do this in pairs. What is the purpose of your collaboration? I'm assuming that you're all here, obviously, with the way that the 
LDATs have been set up, that you're working in a collaborative way, that you're looking at how do we leverage this. What is the purpose of it, fundamentally? Just have a go at the first thing that comes into your mind. Have a crack. Just take a note of it. Why, why do you exist? Not what do you do, but why are you here? What's the purpose? So I'm not going to ask what your purpose is, but how did you go answering that? Was it really obvious and clear for you all? No? No? <laughs> Thanks for being honest. No, it often isn't. So if you're struggling with this, I would say this is a great place to go back. When you go back into your collaboration and start to have that conversation, because what we find is we've often got slightly different ideas about why we're here. Um, and people usually don't start off with a shared purpose, but there's an impetus that's bringing you together, which might be about drug and alcohol, whatever it is. But spending the time really understanding what is our purpose collectively, not what is mine, but do we have a shared purpose? And does everybody have the same shared purpose? How would you know? Is it a conversation you've ever had, or... Is it just something you take as a given? And again, this is really normal. We show up, it's like everyone's here for the same reason, aren't they? And then we find out when difficulties pop up that actually we've got very different purposes, the hidden agendas people were talking about. It's really normal. None of us are neutral, and we're all beholden to someone or something else. It could be our funder, our boss, our community. So the more we can be really honest about that and transparent, the more we can then figure out, right, so how do we work together then, given this complexity that we've all got quite different purposes, but it's something we can come together around. So once we know the why, and, I, and there's a lovely quote, which is once we, I think it was Nietzsche said, once you know our why, you can bear almost any how. Your why, your purpose is the anchor in the collaboration because you will get, you know, you'll get um, thrown around, taken off course with the winds of change. It just happens all the time. And that's what happened to bring people back to why are we here to land it in that. I'll give you an example of it in the collective impact we're working in in Burke. Every time the um, leadership table comes together, which is a cross-community leadership table, a different community member tells a story about a young person in that community and the progress that they've seen. Um, to land, a, and it's a ritual, and it's like, this is why we're here. We're here for our young people in the community. And it could be a story about a, a challenge they've had, but, or it could be about what's shifting. But that just anchors everybody about, OK, leave your agendas at the door. We're here for those young people in our community. So once we've understood our why, and I say that like it suddenly becomes crystal clear, and it never does, and it may well change, but once you know, you kind of, you've got it in your gut around why you're there, the next part of collaboration is spending the time to deeply understand what is the challenge we're trying to address. Um, and this is a fairly simple sense-making framework that can be a great tool for you to use. Again, you know, back in your collaboration groups, is to think about, you know, in the middle we have the challenge. This is kind of where they have the disorder. There's some challenge in the middle you're trying to address. 
And first of all, it's thinking, is it a simple problem we're facing? And what we mean by a simple problem is that you can sense it, you can categorize it and respond. So you kind of go, okay, this is around, um, there's no education about alcohol or ice or whatever it is. We know how to do that. That's something we can respond to. There's best practice out there, which we can draw on that helps us do it. Um, and then there's a more complicated problem, which might be one which is, and I'll, I'll give you these slides, by the way, so you'll, you'll have a copy of this, that you might sense it. Then you need to do a bit of analysis to go, is this, a, is this a challenge we can actually meet by ourselves, or do we need to bring in someone else who's got the expertise, like a you know, subject matter expert, a consultant, or you know, is it a technology thing? We can bring someone in to do that. But we can still respond even though it's complicated. And that's when we're drawing on good practice. So trying to get one referral system in a community for young people to access a whole range of different services, it's something we can all do. It might be complicated, but we could get in systems which can help that and we can figure it out. It's not outside of our way of working. And then we've got complex problems. And they're problems that we actually don't know what the problem is. So if we're trying to address root causes of why do we have high levels of drug and alcohol use in our communities, depending on who you bring to the table, everybody's going to have a very different idea of what the problem is and what the solution should be. So we have to probe into it. We have to ask questions. And then we can kind of sense what we think it might be. But the way that we respond is by trying things. It's emergent practice because good practice and best practice may not have worked to address those root causes. In fact, we know it hasn't. Yeah, there's very few examples we've got where that's happening. So we've got a, with a complex problem, what we find is that you can't just apply, here's a practice or evidence we know from another place. It might be that in addressing the complex problem, you do lots of those other, you address lots of simple problems, like we need education, you know, we need to be able to address liquor licensing. They're all things that we can do, but they don't address the complex problem. So the way of working, if you're trying to address the complex problem, is quite different. You've got to test and try and <coughs> move into it. And then we've got more chaotic problems, which is where we don't have time to kind of figure out what problem is. We've got to act quickly. You know, bushfires, emergencies in the area, we act and then we kind of reflect on what happened and then we think about how would we respond the next time. And what we can, then when we reflect, we might go, well, actually, we could have done that better. Now, the challenge is, is being able to figure out what kind of challenge are we facing. And it may feel like we sit in all of these at all the same time. But this is really important because how you respond to it is really different. So if you've got a simple problem, it doesn't mean it's not hard, it's just that it's something that you can, there is best practice or wisdom out there on how to address it. You might just need to coordinate some actions across different players in your community. It's like, we can address this, we can, you know, get information together, get it out there to young people, but we've got to coordinate. If it's a complicated problem, you might have to get people to cooperate. So coming up with a one referral service for young people in your area means people have got to cooperate together. But there's a way of doing it, yeah? You, there's models you can get, there's ways we can address it. If it's a complex problem, we need collaboration. And we need to be bringing people together who deliberately see that in different ways. So the key thing to remember here is that most of the challenges that are on this right-hand side, we've got rules for it. We've got operating procedures, we've got evidence, best practice. And being an expert in that is valued. Yeah, you'll bring people in who've got the drug and alcohol expertise. We've had, you know, we've had that this morning. They're all specialized in different areas. But that doesn't help you when you're trying to address a complex problem. Because we've got to try experiments, we've got to test and try, and it's really unpredictable what's going to happen. You try something in your community, and depending on what's going on at the time, it's really unpredictable. But you've got to test and try, run experiments, and the expertise is not sufficient to crack it. You actually just need to bring people together who can say, I don't know what to do here, but we're gonna try things. And we can see why that's difficult, because all of our education and training is on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. We're educated, we're trained, our whole so 
In fact, we're rewarded for this. You know, this is what we get paid for, our expertise. We're not paid to then come together and go, I don't know what to do. So it's really countercultural. it's counterintuitive, because we'll come together and we'll try and be experts and solve a complex problem and we wonder why nothing shifts, because that's not going to be enough. So this could be a useful tool to go, so what's the challenge we're trying to address? Is it simple? Is it complicated and is it complex? Because if it's simple or complicated, you don't need to try and build a whole cross-community collaboration. You may just need to bring together a few players who've got the skills to do it, to build up that incremental change, you know? I'm a big believer for not overcooking collaboration. If you can do it yourself, if you've got the authority, the resources and the know-how to do it yourself, do it yourself. And in the community sector, having kind of lived there most of my life, I would say we spend an awful lot of time trying to get everybody on board and it's only because someone won't make a decision and go, we can actually do this. Let's kind of authorise ourselves and let's make it happen. So I'm a big believer in not collaborating, believe it or not, even though that's what I do for a job, but only when you need to collaborate because it's really bloody hard work, as we know. So if you do have to collaborate or you do have to cooperate, then it's useful to think about what kind of collaboration is required. So we've got a spectrum here, and again, this is quite important because we hear from lots of people, oh, we're collaborating. But actually, when you dig under the surface, you find out that, well, they're not really collaborating, they're communicating or coexisting. And that might be absolutely what's needed given the challenge you're trying to address. Mm -hmm. So we've got a spectrum here, and I want you to just spend a bit of time thinking about where do you spend most time? So at one end, we've got competition. Yeah, that C word that keeps coming up. Really, really normal in collaboration. Yeah, if we've got collaboration, we've got the shadow of it, which is competition. So there's nothing wrong with competition. In industry, private, business, sport, that's how we actually make progress and we keep striving to get things better because we <coughs> compete. In the social sector, we think it's a really dirty word, and I don't do it, yeah? It's everyone else who competes. But we're always competing for resources, for um, numbers, clients, funding, or for being the one who gets the attribution. It's, it's just really normal. So if we accept it's going to be there, then we can think about how do we work with it productively. So we've got competition, we've got coexisting where we know about each other, but we don't need to work together. Then we've got communication, which is like interagency, so we're sharing information, and that's really useful, but we're not having to come together to do anything any different. And then cooperation, so it might be as needed on one-off projects, that you come together just for that project, and it's fairly ad hoc, but you need to come together and cooperate. And then we've got more coordinated work, where you might align your work with other organisations, to be able to get a better outcome. So the territory that most of you will be in, I would suspect might be there, is that you've got to coordinate some work together, but you're doing what you're good at, and you've just got to find ways to bring it together. And then we've got collaboration, which is much longer term, based on a shared mission. Um, you've got to make shared decisions, you've got to share resources. And then we've got fully integrated programs at this end, right down to collective impact, which is long term, you've got alignment of a common agenda, you've got alignment of measurements of success that you've all agreed, regardless of what sector you're in, on what a good outcome would look like. And you might be doing a whole heap of these other pieces of work, like communicating, coordinating, to achieve that collective impact. So, at this end of the spectrum, it requires a lot of trust. Really, by this stage, people are coming in, you've got a shared agenda and high degrees of trust. The other end of the spectrum, really, people are protecting turf. So, this can be a really useful tool for you to consider when you're, you know, looking at what's the work and what, how do we need to respond? It might be completely appropriate to just cooperate or coordinate activities depending on what you're trying to do. Again, let's not try and overcook it. Um, and then it's useful to think about are the problems ones which are technical, i.e. simple or complicated that we know how to fix, or are they adaptive? 
And I think this was a big observation I had this morning, that a lot of what we saw in the policy was technical things were actually, a lot of the shift that's required is adaptive, which means a change in behaviour, values or belief. And that's much harder to do. It means we've got to actually think differently about how we collaborate. We've got to behave differently. We've got to let go of power. We've got to work differently with those dynamics around competition. And usually what we are negotiating in adaptive work is, what is it that we need to keep or conserve that's really core to our community or the way that we work that we don't want to let go of? And there'll be people advocating for this. There'll be people advocating for, so what do we discard or let go of that we stop doing, that we think that way of working is no longer useful, or that value set, or that mindset, and where do we innovate? Where's the new piece? Now, this is really difficult, as you can imagine, if you think about in your own context. As soon as you have this conversation, it's around what people feel in their hearts and their guts about what's important. So I want you to just have a quick chat with the person next to you. If this is, this is the core of adaptive work, that as well as the programs you're putting in place, what is, what is the conversation that um, we often talk about is the song beneath the words. It's the stuff people aren't talking about, but it's what people are holding on to, and it's what can stop us collaborating. So have a go, thinking about, in your initiative, what is it people are advocating for you to keep? What are people saying we should stop doing or let go of? And what, who's showing up saying, oh, it's the new shiny thing? And, it, and where are you in that? Which one are you advocating for? Yeah, have a go. things was it people were saying that you should keep? Anyone wants to share that? Yeah. Goodwill and existing established relationships yep. around the room. Absolutely, yeah, goodwill, really important. Yeah. What about what people are saying, oh we need to stop doing that or let go of what kind of things was that? Especially one person's job. One person's job? In other words, you know, all the ideas in a community 
really then it's up to one person to do all the work. So okay. Okay. So yeah, so how we move away from responsible Xiong Wang, yeah. Over in the corner. No, I just actually going to say I'm happy to be listening to those points because I'm thinking those questions are really hard to answer. Uh, uh, because it's going to vary from group to group and who you collaborate with, what you want to conserve and what you want to discard. Mm. Um, and then what, where do you innovate? And also, like, from your talking about the continuum from competition to collaboration, I'm wondering where collaboration sits, like, for example, if we're doing Youth Week and we're coming together with other agencies, is that collaboration or is that just working together for a little while but not really collaborating? So where is the, the continuum or where, where do you sit in that? And yeah. what is real collaboration, from my understanding, what I'm hearing is it's a long-term thing rather yeah. than a one-week project. Yeah, but the great thing you've said there is so we need to have those conversations mm -hmm. to figure out what does that look like for us, what's needed. But I think the key thing with these questions is it's a great way to bring people in. So where are we at? What do we need? To, everyone will have something different. And often it's around um, resources, status, power. That, you know, it's like if we move forward, we may that person may not want to let go of it being their job because they may get a lot of power and status from it. These things are often unspoken. Um, that may not be the case, but, but it's having surfacing that conversation. I would say that if, you, if your collaboration is stuck, often it's because this conversation is maybe taking place outside, outside the meeting, in the corridor, in the car park, that it's hard that people will be saying, no, there's different ways of working we need to value. So the more we can have that conversation, the more we can make progress. I just want to move, because I'm getting wound up again. <coughs> not, not in that way, but getting them. Um, yeah. It's time, there's way too much to speak about on this and not enough time. I want to speak about the trolls, because um, you've mentioned these before. And I find that this can be a really powerful tool. The more we normalize this, there'll be three trolls, probably more, but we've identified three trolls of collaboration, which will always show up. Competition, that we've talked about. Um, for power, resources, wrecking, whatever it is, it's always going to be present. Control, that people will try and control for different reasons. And again, we see with, say, government and uh, community organisations that government is being used to directing. So they're having to think about how do they let go of control. That can be really hard when there, there's a, been an accountability. Likewise, often... Um, community members, community service, that's actually, a lot of their power comes from knowledge, information, access to community, can also control what happens by holding on to that too tightly, particularly if they fear they're going to lose something. And then commitment. So w there's different levels of investment all the time and different things at stake for people. The other troll we see is that people say, we want to come together and work differently, but they <coughs> don't commit to setting up a different process to do that. We just come together, convene as normal, and expect different things to happen. So the more we can recognize where these trolls are in our collaboration, but also in us, personally. So you know, for me, the troll of control has been a big one. That you know, Running organizations before, I used to be the go-to person who could fix things. Working in com complex issues, none of that matters. So I've had to really kind of Acknowledge, so I'm going to want to step in and have the answer. And I've had to let go of that troll of control, which is very present for me. So know, getting to know it, and that's why we use that picture of the Billy Goat's Gruff. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the rhyme about the goats going over the bridge. And you can't get rid of the control, but they negotiated with it. They got to know it. So we want to bring the troll out from under the bridge, shine a light on it. So it's like, what's the trolls that are sitting in our collaboration? And just, they're really normal. It's not about blame, but they're going to be there. And how do we work with them and manage them when they show up? So the last thing that I'm going to share, because you've all got a handout, um, and unfortunately I don't have a huge amount of time to go into it, but I'm hoping this can be a useful resource. So this is a framework we pull together at Collaboration for Impact based on the work we're doing in Australia. And... On your table, have you got one? Oh, there's more there, sorry, if you haven't got one. And you will have this in the slides. But basically, it's a way to look at 
Where are you in your collaboration? Are you building readiness? Are you building foundations? Are you setting a shared agenda or are you implementing? And at each stage, there's different work to think about. What's the leadership work, the collaboration work, the impact work, and the work in engaging community? So I've given you part of it in the handout, but if you go on our website, you can download all of this. It's free. It's a PDF, and it outlines all the work at different stages. Um, really sorry I didn't have time to go into it with you. But anyway, hopefully that can be a useful resource to map out. Thank you. Thank you.